Welcome to Nickel O's World Podcast. I am your host, Nicole. If this is your first time checking me out, welcome. Thank you so much for giving me a try. And I hope you come back for another week. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome. Thank you so much again for coming back. I love chatting with you guys. And grab your favorite beverage of choice. Today, I am drinking some chai tea. In a cup I got from... Up from my up, <laughs> out from my cabinet called Welcome Friends is Bears, and it reminds me of Boyd's Bears. I'll show you guys closer, but that's what it looks like. I think it's cute. A little fact you didn't know about me: I love Boyd's Bears, and yes, I have a collection. Not a whole lot. I got a couple. All right, as I said, this is episode twenty almost legal and not that you guys know this but this is my fourth time trying to record this podcast so forgive me if I seem scattered and I will apologize in advance to anybody wearing earbuds you might hear my dogs bark I will let you know I am in the living room today so if the lighting seems wonky forgive me I have been room to room in my house I did the kitchen and I just got washed out I was in the living room not living room in the dining room and I'm sorry that's my fan for my cooling thing for my laptop let me unplug it I was in the dining room and then my dad comes down well he's listening to a radio show and I'm trying to record a podcast don't mix and I just was bombarded with interruptions, so now I am in the living room. I hope the lighting's good. And and quick note, um, Talia, thank you so much for telling me about last last week's podcast when I was in the dining room. I didn't. I was sitting too close, and you couldn't see my bo the progress on my boneyard shawl. So. I am, I hope I'm sitting back, I hope my, me to the camera is a better angle, like, further space, not angle, I hope it's a better, further space this time for you, and I will also try to adjust the lighting, because it's cloudy outside, like it wants to rain, and it looks, for some reason, it looks bright out, and it's not really bright, so, yeah, and I got my light on above me. So anyways, with that said, hopefully editing, but I guess we should jump into everything. I got quite a bit to talk about. As you can see, there's my dog there in the background. Three! Come here! Come here! Say hi to everybody! Come here! Now, they don't want to say hi. They want to play. I'm sorry, again, for the earbuds. If you got earbuds in, I'm sorry that they're playful. They know I'm recording and they're trying to make their presence known. That's Gretchen. That three back there. They are both boxers. Their mother and son boxers. Say hello, Greta. Say hi to the viewers. Three, you want to say hi to the viewers? No? Okay. I'm sorry. Again, in the background, they're playing. So if it is loud, I am sorry. Forgive me. I They like to be where I'm at. That's three, so... I try not to keep them away when I'm podcasting because they'll cry sometimes. So, again, long explanation. Forgive me if you're loud. All right. Normally, at the end, normally, this is going to be a lengthier podcast than most of mine because at the end of this podcast, I am going to be putting in a video that I recorded from my iPhone about it shows the amount of snow that we've gotten here in Pennsylvania where I live like out in front of my house it's mini mountains and out back in the backyard it comes like up to my waist and FYI I'm only five foot two so that's a lot of snow we've gotten 
And I know those of you in New Jersey and all know rock salt. We have no rock salt. Any rock salt that is coming into the state, the the um, the state's getting PennDOT. Pennsylvania Highway Department, they're getting it PennDOT. Um, um, Health care facilities, anything of importance like that are getting the salt, which... I'm completely okay with. Hey, I'd rather have you guys have it. You need it more than I do. I can easily use kitty litter. Granted, it doesn't melt the ice. And it's kind of like mud. <laughs> Once you're done walking on us, like mud. However, it does smell good and it does do the trick for now. So yeah, that's what we're using. Um... I know they sell stuff like Quick Joe, I think it's called. And that stuff's just horrid. For like a 20 pound bag, they went $15 for it. And it, it's, it's just a waste. I personally don't like it, so that's that. So basically stick around at the end of the video, at the end of the podcast, and you'll see a video I made. And yeah it has it has music to it so you'll be like what's going on yeah it has music and i hope you enjoy it next going on in the group if you're not part of our ravelry group nicolo's world podcast come on over i'd love to have you we are having a knit along going on right now it's called go red for women's heart awareness and it ends on the 28th. I will keep I will keep it open long enough so that anybody in California feel free to join in. It may not if I can stay up late enough, it'll be closed if not March 1st. If I can stay up late enough to California West Coast time, it'll be closed. Um the winner for it will be drawn on my next podcast, Random Number Generator. The rule, the only rules I have for this are you have to be a member of the group. In order to <laughs> in order to participate in it, you need to be a member of the Nickel O's World Podcast group. So if you're not a member, come join. A little perk. Um, it has to be knit or crocheted in red. Any color red will work. Any you can knit or crochet anything. Um, you can dip in other if other groups that you're in or podcasters that you're in are having anything, and you're allowed to dip more than once. You can. I don't care how many times you dip in another another group that you're in, as long as it's okay with them on how many times you're dipping in other. Groups, because I know some have stipulations. Me, have at it. And as I said, the winner will be random number. It will. The winner will be random number generated. My next podcast. And what will you win? You would like to know. Well, that's easy. Out of my own personal stash, I am giving away. A 100 gram ball of Darn Good Yarn Reclaimed Series Silk Yarn. And it's being kept in Ziploc baggie in case you're allergic to dogs. And, excuse me. And when I mail it to you, it will be mailed in, about in the baggie. It'll stay enclosed in the baggie with a note on washing instructions which are easy this is how the ball looks I don't have the band that tells you the colorway but I know it's from her classic collection and how do I know because I use darn good yarn a lot but this is what it looks like well color ain't showing up too bad it's showing up good a little dark it's showing up a little dark on you but not too bad that's what it looks like and it is just oop, sorry if you get motion sick, but that's what it looks like. It is just gorgeous. I love working with it. Don't be afraid to mix it with other yarns. You can. And let me know what you're going to make with it. As you can see, it is not an even consistency. Which is another thing I love about it. 
but it is so fun to work with. And let me know what you make out of it. I would really love to see. As I said, go to go to Darn Good Yarn. Check check that out. I love the products. I am all for. Them. You have seen me in several podcasts wearing items I've knit out of yarn similar to this. So that's being kept in here, so that everybody knows. Next, did you know we have a blog? I don't know how many of you watch me on my blog, but we have a blog. And it is nicolos.blogspot.com. When you go when you get it up, it'll probably have this up. Ep- if you're getting it up on this episode, it'll have it listed. It'll say like episode 20, almost legal. Cause that's what I'm calling it, because we're almost legal, technically. Almost legal, almost 21. Or almost 21 episodes. But it'll say, like, episode 20, almost legal. And on the top, it'll say, Nickel O's World and Thoughts. I created the blog ever before I ever started thinking of podcasting. I know I could have, on Blogger, I know I could have easily started another blog just for the podcast. But why create all that extra work if I don't have to? On my blog, on the blog, you will see like chit chat that I do. I do book reviews. Sometimes I do product reviews or I'll just, if I go on a trip, I'll blog about the trip I went on or sometimes I just need to write and get my thoughts down. So don't ever be surprised if you go in there and maybe like you're like, did I miss an episode? Did she forget to put it up? Sometimes it's just a blog post. And also, don't forget to comment on there either. You know, feel free to read the archives. And also, if you're watching me on iTunes and you're kind of wondering where the old episodes are of my blog, you know, you're thinking, you're at episode 20. Where's like the first 18 episodes? Well, the first 18 episodes you can find on the blog and on my YouTube channel, Nikki, and I see KI 18229. I think when you get it up, it lists my name. It may list like Nikki 18229, or I'll just have my whole name. But those are the two places where you can find the back episodes. I try to own on iTunes, I try to keep like maybe the first two to three episodes on there. All right, next. We have a personal email. In case you ever want to contact me, we have a personal email. Like, if you only watch me on YouTube and you're like, I have a question, but I don't want to comment and I'm not sure if I should inbox you because I don't know if you'll get it or you just want, or you want to contact me or whatever, you have a question or anything, you can email me for this podcast at Nicolo's World Podcast at gmail.com. And it's also at the end of the credits, in case you're wondering. And with that being said, I told you guys about the video about it shows about the snow we've gotten. And it, it, it is quite funny, speaking of that. I'll, I'll get into that in personal chatter. Moving right along, I we have into the goody stuff. We have finished objects, we have works in progress, and we have some chatter. I guess I should get into finished objects. I have one finished object this week. You guys remember I was saying last week I was working on my second sock for my vanilla fish lips kiss socks? Well... Without further ado, here is the second sock that I was working on last week. Ta-da! All done! I now have socks! I have a pair! Yay! A pair of socks! Woohoo! I, in case you're wondering, I used the Fish Lips Kiss heel and... I strongly recommend for a dollar, buy it. It is the best heel that I've come across so far. And I, I've i tried to gut, like, 
heel gusted in the heel turn. Uh, no. I, I, I like Sweet Tomato Heel by Kat Bordy. I really like that one. That one's a good heel. But I am hooked on Fish Lips Kiss. It is really a great heel. And for a buck, you get like 16 play, <laughs> pages. Of, you get 16 pages, plus you can watch her video. And it is a must. And if you guys will see, notice, I have two different heels, color heels, which is fine. I use, and you will see in the front, I use two different, the toes are two different colors. And that is because I used two different balls of yarn. These are made out of Red Heart, Heart and Soul in the Mellow Stripes colorway. And these socks are a lot of firsts for me. First, I really didn't use a pattern to make the vanilla socks. I created the pattern myself. I made these specifically for my foot, so I knew what to cast on. Like, I knew what to cast on for it. And if I want to make it for a bigger size, I know how. The other first for me was the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And this is what the heel on the second sock looks like. Looks pretty good. Um, another first for me is I used a new cast on. To me, it's a new cast on. I used a Turkish cast on. Sorry, I heard a noise. Wasn't sure what it was. I think it came from outside. Anyhow, I used the Turk. To me, it was new. I never did the Turkish cast on, but... I did the Turkish cast on for the heel, for the heel, <laughs> I like to see that one, for the toe, for toe up socks. These are ankle socks. And the reason why I made them ankle socks, like my other socks you've seen that I've made, like my straight up Halloween socks, I made them longer so that I could wear them with boots. Well, since spring hopefully is around the corner in 29 days. Not that I'm counting or anything. I made these to be ankle socks since I primarily like to wear ankle socks. So that's why they're ankle socks. And for the bind off, I did Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which isn't a first for me. This sock, I don't think that the laddering came out too bad in it. My laddering got better. Like, I don't think you can see the laddering too bad in it. I think it got better. I used, I did them on a circular needle. I think they came out good, but for some reason, always, no matter how I do it, I always get like a gap or a hole, you can see. I usually always get that somewhere and if you guys have an idea on how I can fix it let me know but I and if you're wondering what's up with these these are just wire hangers I use to make sock blockers because I don't own a pair and I wanted to show you guys what they look like I still have not found that 14 or 15 dollars is worthy of sock blockers Something that I'm not going to use every day. And something that I might not even use once a week. If you guys know where I can get a good deal on sock blockers. Or you know anybody de-stashing de -stashing sock blockers at a good price. Let me know. But for now I'm using my little blockers I made. That's what they look like. Yay! And I was actually surprised that... I kept it in the bag to show you guys so I didn't lose it. But I have yarn left over. I have. These are the two balls I made. And I have this much left over. This is how much I have left over in both balls. I have enough, I believe, to make another pair of ankle socks. I'm hoping I can get a pair of a pair of socks out of this ball and a pair of socks out of this ball to make two. 
I'm hoping. I could be wrong because this ball feels smaller than this one. But it could be the way they're wrapped, caked up. But we'll see. Am I going to start another pair of socks out of these? Not right now. They're going to go back in my stash for a while. And as I said, they're Red Heart, Heart and Soul in the Mellow Stripes colorway. I got these at AC Moore. You can check any of your big box stores. I don't know if they sell this colorway in the store anymore. You can check at redheart.com. You may be able to buy it there. If you don't see it listed, type in Mel type in Mellow Stripes. And it should bring it up or it should tell you if they discontinued it. I don't think they discontinued it. But I know I did get this on sale at AC Moore. Because I know they like to move their stock and their clearance. But I'll put these back in my Amer I Love America bag. Because after I'm done podcasting, I can put them away. So, that's all my finished projects. It was actually a fun knit. We have works in progress. And if you're hearing snoring, sorry, it, it's my Gretchen. She's snoring right now. She's napping. And she snores whenever she's content. She'll snore. All right. First of all, I gave my Boneyard Shaw some love. This is my bag. I won. If you guys haven't checked it out, check out the Turbo Knitter Podcast with Ken. I love him. I love Ken. And I won his first contest he had. This is a project bag that he made with quads or ATVs on it. I love it because it's outdoorsy and I love being outdoors and it. Fun stuff. It reminds me of being outside. No, I've never driven a quad in my life, and I want to. So, if you buy me and you have one, teach me how to ride one, because it looks like fun. I know you got to be careful and be responsible. All right. I am working on my Boneyard Shaw by Stephen West. There is a free pattern of it on Rav. However... This one that I'm working on, this pattern didn't come from Rav. Those of you who watch it before, you can probably repeat it along with me. This Boneyard Shaw pattern I'm working on is from his craftsy class called Shawscapes. I don't want to go into too much detail about it because I paid for the class. So, my feeling, anybody that's taken craftsy classes before with patterns... And they're actually free pattern on <sighs> words, Nicole. Anybody that's ever taken a craftsy class before and the pattern that you get with the class, if the pattern is on RAV and it's a free, free pattern, even though let's say it may differentiate from the RAV pattern, you know, do you still talk a little bit more in detail or no? Like me, because this pattern came from my craftsy class with them, and it differentiates from the RAV pattern. I don't want to go into too much detail about it, because my feeling is I paid for the class, and in turn, part of that money that I used to pay for the class paid for the pattern. Maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but that's just my thought. Anyways, it is the Boatyard Shaw, and... You can use DK or worsted weight. Oh, excuse me. On uh, size 5 millimeter circular needles. Here is what it looks like. I printed it off from Craftsy. As I said, it is the pattern you get from Craftsy. Leaning forward a minute. Sorry. I dropped something that goes along with it. I uh, will get it out and show you, you guys. It made a lot of progress. Um, I Because I recorded this three times before, I already moved the doohickey up. But I will say, Talia, if you're watching, I hope you can see it better this week than last week. So let me know if you can. Um, let me make sure I'm showing you guys the right way. Okay, here is... I'm trying to show you it's like turning into a cocoon. But here's what it looks like. 
so far. Here's one side going. Here's the other. And then here is the other side. But it got a lot of love. The jigger was down here last week and it I am up here now so this is how far I've come I made a good bit of progress as I said it was down here before and now I moved it up here so it got a lot of love this past week I hope you got please let me know if you can see this better this week y'all but this is what it looks like trying to show it so that you guys can see it good I had it on waist yarn but it, it 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 was rolling on itself this is what it looks like I am using Karin simply soft in the limelight colorway and it is a worsted weight yarn it is six ounces 315 yards that's what I'm using and I, I love Karin Simply Soft. It is, for an acrylic yarn, it is soft. I love it. And if you're wondering, returning viewers can probably explain it. I know some people are like, you're making a shawl and you're using acrylic yarn. Yes. I love all yarn. Whether it's acrylic all the way up to your high end. I love it. Granted, I've never used like, um, what is that yarn everybody keeps talking about? Madeline Tosh. I've never used anything like that, but I've used like your higher end yarns. I want Madeline Tosh. I want to find some of it and try it sometime and make some. But anyways, I figured to try this, I would use some Karin Simply Soft when I was out at um, Joann's. I had a coupon and I was like, I like that. That green, that green just, it appealed to me. You know me, You if if you're new, you will learn, I love color. I love all colors, I, I especially bright colors. I love colors, and I'm like, I love this. And the green isn't showing up on here. Hopefully with the editing it will, but I love the color. I'm hoping to have it done by St. Patrick's Day because I want to enter it in if you if you watch uh, the podcast, We Are Yarn with Mandy Cat, she is having a, an along going on there. I think it's called Go Green, and it's for St. Patrick's Day, I believe. And you can put your, I think, knit and crochet green item. So I want to put this in it. And as I said, the reason I did it using acrylic is because it's like I wanted to take the Shawscapes class to see what it was like because I've. I've heard mixed reviews about Stephen West. Some people are like, he's too out there. I just don't like him. Or he's just too funky for me. I mean, we all have our own opinions. I like some of his patterns because they are different. But I was like, let me just use this Karin yarn or for the shawl. I was like, let me use the green. That's appealing to me. Let's try making the boneyard out of it. And I'm like, okay, if I make the I make the boneyard shot and I don't like it, I'm like, I can give it away as a gift and not have to worry about writing lengthy washing instructions. Say, here you go, wash it, dry it in the, you can wash it in the washer, dry it in the dryer. And I have a feeling my gram is liking my shawl, but she doesn't like the color. So, I will be making another one of these after it's done because she wants one. I will say, this is, I love this pattern. It is such a fun knit. To me, it's fun. It's potato chippy. Now, being that it is getting longer, it's taken me a longer time to do the rows. Like, well, not the rows, but the pattern repeats. Normally, I'd have pattern, I'd have like three, four pattern repeats done in no time. Now, I'm lucky in one day if I get two done. 
Like, I try to get... I should say if I get three done in a day, I'm lucky. I usually get two. Because I don't want to overdo it. And plus, I got a lot in my needles. But it is fun. He does tell you how long to make it. However, this is a... I'm kind of going for dramatics. I'm going to make this a big shawl. Like, I can just completely wrap around me. And I like those shawls. And I just like the shawls like that come around your neck. Or, like, that come across here, but they're not a full wearable shawl. I don't know. I find, to me, shawls are classy, and they're warm, and they're fun. I like them. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old. I hope not, but <laughs> I don't know. Something about a shawl is, I, I, I think every woman should own a shawl. And if there's men out there that want to own them, I think they should own one, too. They're great. I love this shawl, and it is such a fun knit. I am enjoying it. And I can't wait to cast on another one when it's done. And the yarn, if you're wondering, this is how much yarn I have till I'm out. I do have another skein of it, which I will be using. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more repeats to go till I start the border of it. And once I start the border, I'll almost be done with it. As I said, I'm kind of going for the dramatics of it and making it bigger than what he's calling for. And that's something fun you can do with patterns. I don't always stick to a pattern. Like, if I want to make it longer, I'll make it longer. If I want to make it shorter, I make it shorter. And I have everything noted down here as to what I'm doing. Again, a fun, fun knit. I love it. It's being kept in here. It's potato chippy. I work on it when I watch TV. And I'll get into that in a little bit in another segment. Next, I want to say thank you, Talia, very much. I, I have not one sweater on the needles now, but two things you for that she's giving me sweateritis oh and by the way also thank you Tally because my queue on Ravelry has grown immersely now with a lot of sweaters I'm going to cast on so thank you for that <laughs> all right oh let me put that back in here my next sweater, you guys remember I was talking about casting on Mr. Green Jeans? I did, I cast it on Mr. Green Jeans. And let me tell you who Mr. Green Jeans is by because I don't think I have it on here. <laughs> Mr. Green Jeans. Is by Amy S W E N S O N. I'm not even gonna try to butcher it, but it's by her. It is. It's a free pattern on Rav, so I'm not giving anything away. But that's what it is, Mr. Green Jeans. And anybody, I believe it is. If you remember Captain Kangaroo, I believe his sidekick was called Mr. Green Jeans. I remember Captain Kangaroo when I was a kid, and I believe his sidekick was called Green Jeans. Anyways, going off on a tangent. To make this, it calls for a worsted weight. It calls here for worsted weight yarn. And I got yarn out of my stash. I am using Venice Choice. Six ounces. 290 yards. And it's in the purple print, color 202, purple print. And I don't know if they still make this colorway. You can check on Lion Brand. I got mine at Ollie's a long time ago. I know a lot of them are still in circulation. As I said, I dug in stash to make this. And I don't know, this color just appealed to me for a sweater when I was looking through. I was like... 
Like, Nicole, you have a pile of yarn. You don't need to go buy new yarn to go make a sweater. Use your stash. Don't be wasteful. And I'm thinking, don't be wasteful. Use your stash. Because that means you can buy more yarn. All right. Here, it's a raglan top down. So here's the front. I know it looks kind of like a blob right now, but this is the front. Here's what it looks like from the back. I am making that 1X. I call it extra large. It's the 1X. It goes all the way up to a 3X. So from extra small to 3X. And I hope with editing that the color will look better for you guys. But that's what it looks like, the colorway. And I happen to like it for this. And the reason this is rolling is because I didn't, you do, obviously, the color last. And I got a snag nail. Anyways. And forgive me if my finger, if you wonder why my fingers look black. FYI, I colored my hair today. And... Somehow, the I always get black on my fingertips. It, it always stains. I don't know why. Anyways. And my stitch markers are in my... I made these stitch markers. Uh, girly girl pink. And I am using a 4.5 millimeter knit circular needle. And I will explain why after I show my second project. And it's being kept in my cloud bag. I'm not going to lift it up because I have other stuff sitting on top of it. This is also a fun knit. I've been knitting this when I was watching TV as well. I'll work on my boneyard some. And then I'll work on this to try and give them all the love. Because I kind of want to get this done before it gets hot. I know those of you are like, are you serious? We don't think it's going to warm up up this way. Mm, we'll see, but for now, I want to be able to get it done and wear it as long as I can. All right, moving along to sweater number two. And again, thank you, Talia, because I have, I must be neglecting for punishment, two sweaters on the needle. Next, this one I'm working on, it's by Mel from the Single Handed Knit Podcast. I love Mel's patterns. This is the first one of her patterns that I am ever making. I've never knit a Mel ski pattern before. I've always been admiring them. And I know I'm going to mess the name of it up in Hawaiian. So if you do know how to say it, please let me know. It is... Ho Aloha, I believe. It's Hawaiian for Friendship. It's a paid pattern. And I don't want to give too much away. This is knit on 5mm circular needles as well. But this is what the pattern looks like. I think it is gorgeous. You can wear it for spring or you can wear it for winter. Which I think is great because if you live on the East Coast, you know that a lot of times, even in May, it can be bitter cold. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Sorry, I heard noise. Now, it calls for a worsted weight as well. So, I dug in my stash. And I'm like, I really don't want to go but, like, I was on the fence. I'm like, look, I don't have enough yarn to make this sweater. But I really want to cast it on now. And, <coughs> excuse me. I looked and I'm like, well, I have enough of this color to do the sweater. And I'm like, Nicole, just try it. Knit the pattern up. You like it, even though maybe you don't like the color on you, you can always knit another one and give this one away to somebody else who would love it. And I am using Red Heart Super Saver yarn. In, let me get it, I think it's called St. Pat's or St. Patty's. It is 
um, St. Patty's Green, it's called. And it's being kept right now in a bag that I crocheted. And these are actually being knit on 5 millimeter needles. And I absolutely hate these needles. And I will explain to you guys why in a bit. But I'm not too far in it. I just started it. I didn't work on it last night. But here's what it looks like so far. It is a top down. And I am using my I Love Summer Cup. Um, stitch markers. Now, I was saying, you're probably wondering, you're like, you're saying you hate the needles that they're on. Yes. Um, if you guys follow me on Facebook or Twitter, you will hear me say about this. Oh, and if you guys want to follow me on Facebook, you can look me up under Nicole O'Shaughnessy on Facebook and on Twitter as Nikki18229. But I was saying I hate these needles. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're the Yarnology collection. This is the front. I mean, I like this part. But the part that's giving me the trouble is this. The tubing. Or the cable. You see the cables like plastic or whatever you want to call this. Like plastic tubing. Well, to, to get it along... Like, it bends like that, which is a pain. And then I want to get more on as I'm knitting. I have to do this. I'm tugging. And sometimes I'm really going to tug it along. And then as I'm doing so, on the other end, my stitches fall off. So, if you guys can tell me how... I can get this the the plastic cable to slicken up a little bit so that the stitches flow along better. Please let me know. I did go ahead and and I don't know why. See, I'm gonna have to rip this out. I seen it and restart it because I have a big hole right here and I don't know why. I started it on this sweater, but as I said, I kept having to tug along and tug along, and it caused a hole. I'm debating whether to rip it out and restart it on these, or scrunch them up on my chagos, or I just may rip it out and wait till my new needles come in that I ordered. But I am working on it. I, I think I'll continue. Maybe I can fix it I don't know we'll see I'll let you guys know that or if I can find that or take it down to four and a half we'll see all right that's everything I am currently working on I talked to you guys about the needles um Marilyn sheep and wool I would love to go but I don't know if I'm gonna get to go we'll see I really would love to go I'd love to meet some of y'all, but we'll see. Valentine's Day. I hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was my grandma's birthday, and we had a snowstorm the day before, so I couldn't take her out. But two days before I went to the store, I bought her a cake. And on her birthday, I made her dinner. I made her poor man's lobster. I found a great recipe for it. Oh, it tasted. Which used haddock. And Old Bay seasoning. Oh, it was good. I loved it. And if you're wondering what did I get for Valentine's Day? Nothing. This is what I got. Nothing. No happy Valentine's Day. Nothing. All right. That is that. I will talk quickly about what I made cooking and baking and what I'm watching on TV. So if you if you leaving me, bye. If you're sticking around, let's get started because as I said, this is long. Um, baking. 
I made scones, English English style scones. I used um a round cookie cutter because I can't find a biscuit cutter. If you guys know where I can find a biscuit cutter, let me know. I also I made scones. What else did I? Oh, corn. I made corn muffins and cornbread using silk almond milk, and I didn't use eggs. And oh, those are so good. I also made an eggless pineapple cake. And that was good. I put nutmeg in it too. And it, it, it just came out good. It, my household, my dad and my gram love it. It's almost gone. Um, what else did I make? I made poor, I cooked poor man's lobster for my gram. I also made vegan shepherd's pie. I found... I follow um, Jamie Oliver on YouTube, and I seen how the ma I got the recipe from there, and it was so good. I had to alter it because I couldn't find some of the things that they were talking about from England, like flagellated beans. I wasn't sure in the store if I should look for flagellated beans here or what kind of <laughs> or what I should look for here. I used chickpeas instead. Uh, another thing, I, I follow Sorted Foods on YouTube, and I made meatball marinara sub. Oh, that was good. That didn't last either long in my house. So that's what I've been cooking. It was pretty good. I like to try different things when I cook and different recipes. TV-wise, with the Olympic... With the games going on in Sochi, let's put it that way, I don't want to get in trouble for copyright, but the games going on in Sochi, a lot of my shows I watch in the evening aren't on or the repeats, so I've been watching a lot of Netflix. I watched, if you ever watch PBS, I watched the first season, I'm watching the first season of Inspector Lewis. Where he's an old, not the younger fella, but the, where he's older. Um, I watched the first season of the new Inspector Marcy show where he's younger. And I'm also watching the one where he's older. I've watched Luther on BBC. That is quite interesting. Hmm. Another one I'm watching, it's a BBC, it was a BBC show called Rosemary and Time, where the gardeners and they're solving murders. So I watched that. And Sunday night, for the very first time, on TV itself, I watched Downton Abbey. Ugh. I now know what all the talk is about. <laughs> My Graham said to me on Sunday, she goes, see what's on that t see what's on TV or what's on your Netflix or Flixnet, she goes. I'm like, okay. And I looked, I go, there's this, there's Downton Abbey. I go, there's nothing else really on. And she's like, yeah, I'll leave it all. Let's just check it out. She's like, I've heard people talk about this Downton thing, this Downton business. I said, okay. So we put it on and wow. I was like, it's the current season, so I was kinda lost about everything since I never seen it before. So right to net net right on Netflix I went on the computer and I typed in Downton Abbey and they don't have it where you can stream it over the internet to watch the episodes. You have to you have to get them on DVD. I have my hot little hands on Masterpiece Classic Downton Abbey Season 1, Disc 1. And last night, my Graham and I watched Part 1 of Disc 1 Season 1. So it was the whole very first episode of Part 1 and wow. I was like, this is good. Now, 
when my grandma and I watched them Sunday, we were like, she's like, what year are they in? I said, I don't know, Nan. I said, I go, I recognize the cars. I said, I said, 19, I go, I go, Nan, is this the 1920s? She's like, how should I know? I go, did you grow up in that time? She goes, it could be. And as you're watching, and it may be a spoiler if you didn't see the new episode, but he was talking about Prohibition. I go, Nana, Prohibition. I go, that's the 1920s, if I remember my history. She goes, yes, you're right, Nicole, that's the 1920s. So then when we watched last night, Disc 1, Season 1, Part 1 of it, we were watching it. She goes, well, this isn't the 1920s. She's like, what year is this? And as they were talking, spoiler if you've never seen Downton Abbey, I looked, I said, right as he opened, the, he was talking and he opened the newspaper, I saw the Titanic, I said, just by the talk, they were talking about, like, a ship sinking, I said, Nana, I think this is April of 1912, this is when this is taking place, and sure enough, I'm right, <laughs> and it was just, like, incredible, like, how they got everything correct, I'm loving it. So, I'm watching that. So, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If there's a show on Netflix you think I should check out, let me know. All right. I am extremely chatty today. We are, like, at 51 minutes. So, I am going to stop. I am going to let you guys go because I'm also putting a video at the end. So, I hope you like everything I showed. It, any comments, suggestions, or anything, please let me know. I hope, I hope this finds you well. I hope you are good. If you're not well, please get well. I will talk to you guys again next week. Please remember, be kind to others. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. You know, don't go be nasty to somebody just to be nasty to them. Sh respect each other. That's one thing we're having a lack of. Hang on. We are having... I don't want to say it's just me, but I've noticed a lack of respect. We need to get back to that. Respect one another. Do some good karma. Do unto others as you ain't done unto yourself. I'm just saying, so have a great weekend. I Be safe. Take care. If you're in an area where there's a mound of snow and I know your roads are getting smaller, please be careful. So until next week, bye. bye.